Hi, thanks for stopping by Grains and Small Places and today I wanted to share with you three different cracker recipes. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to use spelt today for these graham crackers and I'm going to measure out my wheat berries. That way I can use that measurement and it'll give me the exact amount of flour that I'm looking for. Um, I'll make sure to put a link to the recipe in the description box below to all of these cracker recipes. That way you can print them off to your convenience and if you just want to make one or two or all of them, that's all up to you. And here is our fresh milled flour. So to this beautiful spelt flour, I'm going to add our baking powder, our salt, and our cinnamon. One teaspoon of baking powder, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and about a quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon. If you want these to be cinnamon graham crackers where you sprinkle the cinnamon and sugar on top, you could increase this amount, but this is just to give us that traditional honey graham cracker flavor. So I'm just going to mix the dry ingredients together here. And I know you're wondering why am I using this mixer and I don't have my normal mixer out. Well, <laughs> I'm making three cracker recipes, so it's just gonna be easier for me to go ahead and use this mixer as the third one. So we're going to be playing around with my little KitchenAid artisan mixer here. I normally use this to make pasta and use it as the shredder attachment. I hardly ever use it for baking, but when I wanna make multiple recipes, it's very helpful to have. Okay, let me put that where you can see it. And I have one stick of softened butter. So I went ahead and pulled that out earlier today. That way it could start softening. And to the softened butter, I'm going to use three quarters of a cup of packed brown sugar. And I'm just gonna add in about a teaspoon of some honey. So I like to add this in just to give it that traditional, like I was saying, honey graham cracker flavors. Flavor. All right, and then we are going to cream this together until it's nice and fluffy. And just wanna make sure we scrape down our sides. Because as you can see, it does not get completely incorporated. I suppose if you wanted to use the beater attachment, you could use that just for the creaming of the butter and sugar part. And this just helps get us the nice airy texture so when that they're crispy, they're not just one flat sheet that's super hard to bite into. Okay, it's starting to get lighter in color and airier and fluffier. I'm gonna let it go one more time. All right. No, this didn't look like it got mixed all the way. I think I'm gonna let that go one more time. Whoops. Okay, I am happy with that. Whoops. You can see how nice and fluffy this butter and sugar got. That's what we're looking for. Oftentimes the creaming of the butter and sugar is the step that gets skipped when you're making cookies or cakes and a lot of times that's why we have texture issues with those if you don't quite like them. So don't skip this step. It's an easy one but it does take a few extra minutes. Once the butter and sugar is creamed like this with the honey, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla. I love to use my own homemade vanilla. I do have a video on how to make that if you're interested. I can put a link to that or a card here. And I'm gonna just quickly mix that one together. So I have about a half a cup of water here. I'm just gonna reserve that here to the side. 
we're going to start adding our dry ingredients. I'm going to put about half of this mixture that we mixed up here in. And just slowly incorporate that. And we want to put about half of this half a cup of water in. And we're going to reserve the other half for just a moment. And that's one of the reasons I had to retire mine because the switch doesn't always work. I kind of, I broke it. I'm just going to scrape down the sides. I'm going to put the other half of our dry ingredients. into the dough. And then I'm going to put a little bit more of this water in here. You may or may not need all of this water. It really just depends. You want it, the dough to start to come together, but you don't want it to be super sticky. Let me show you here. I have a little bit of this water left. And you can see this is forming a nice dough. This is the dough. This is how I want it to be. But I'm also still having a whole bunch, I hope you can see this, a whole bunch of dry, crumbly, just raw flour down in here. So that's how I know I'm gonna go ahead and use the rest of this water. And if you wanna pour it down at the bottom, that way you know it's getting to that dry flour, that's probably a good idea. Okay, and we're not looking to knead this. We don't want to turn it into a bread <laughs> or anything like that because then it would be a really tough cracker. We still want it to have a tender crisp to it. So as soon as everything's incorporated and it becomes this cohesive ball, let me move this so you can see that better. As you can see, I'm not used to working with this mixer. It's been a while <laughs> as a mixer anyway. So you can see the texture of this dough. It is soft, but it's not sticking all over my hands. Hope you can see that. And I can form it into a dough ball. So you could either take this and wrap it in some cling film and put it in your fridge. I'm just getting a little bit. So this that's left in here, put that in your fridge or I'm just gonna go ahead since I'm using my other mixer today also, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this right back into my bowl and I'm gonna cover it with cling film and let it sit in my fridge for about 30 minutes while I let the fresh milled flour start absorbing the liquids in here. So we're gonna cover this. if I can get this off here. That's another reason I ended up <laughs> switching my mixers is because this bowl is sometimes hard to get off the base, but we didn't have any problems today. So this is going in the fridge for about 30 minutes. While I'm letting this chill in the fridge, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start on the next cracker recipe that we're going to do together. So I'll make sure to put the recipe links below to all the different recipes that way in case this video is hard to follow <laughs> because I'm gonna make all three of them. Why not save time in the kitchen while I'm in the kitchen? Okay, so for the next one, we're going to do our cheese crackers. So this is similar to like a cheese it, I guess. We're gonna use half spelt and half soft white. So I'm going to go ahead and measure out my wheat berries here. I put a little too many in there. I was thinking I was doing all soft white and not half and half. <laughs> okay. I 
I love these containers. They are great, airtight. I love keeping them in. They're easy access, easy to get my scoops in and out. I'll put a link below if you're interested in these or any of the other things that I'm working with today. We're looking for about 120 grams. <laughs> Okay, 121, I'll take that. And we're gonna head over to the mill and get this milled. Okay, and there it is. Okay, and there is our half spelt, half soft white flour. And I'm guessing this is probably what you were expecting seeing <laughs> when I had my mixer out. And don't worry, we're going to use our little compact Bosch here, too. Ooh. Okay, and we're going to be using our cookie paddle, but also we're going to be using our little slicer attachment to grate the cheese for us. Okay, so this is our shredder attachment, and this is some sharp cheddar cheese. And we're just going to just shred this straight into the bowl. And as you can see, it goes straight into the bowl. And I'm just going to sneak the extra that didn't make it in. Okay, and then I'm just gonna slide this back on here. This is one of the drivers opposite to where we put in our cookie paddle. So you can see our nice shredded cheese here. And here's my other stick of butter that I had coming to room temperature earlier, nice and softened. So I'm just going to take, this one is only going to take a half a stick of butter or a quarter of a cup. So I'm gonna put that straight in. And to this, I'm also gonna add a teaspoon of salt, and then we're going to mix this together. Okay, I'm just gonna rinse this off real quick so I can use the same one. This is the one that we used for the graham crackers. Okay. And I'm just gonna scrape the sides here too. because we want this all incorporated. Okay, that smells nice and cheesy. Alrighty, and to this, we're going to add the flour that we milled, just all of it, and we're going to mix this on a slow speed. There's not a lot of moisture in this, so it tends to be kind of gravelly, and then we're gonna add in a, just a little bit of cold water. So you can see the gravelly texture I'm talking about, but even for this, we wanna make sure that we scrape our sides, because you can see a lot of this flour is still loose and I wanna just give it a chance to adhere to the butter and cheese. Okay, so I'm turning this off so you can hear me. I have my cold water. You wanna make sure this is cold, otherwise it will melt the butter and the cheese and we don't want that. So we've got cold water, we're gonna start drizzling it in. This is about two tablespoons. You may need a little more, you may need a little less. So I'm gonna just put this on a low speed and just start drizzling in the water until this kind of forms a little cohesive dough ball. It's starting to come together here. You can see it's starting to come off the sides. Don't add any more water at that point because when we start to put this together, we should be able to get it into a cohesive ball. 
you can see the majority of it did. So I just want to make sure to scrape all the sides. And I'm kind of liking this texture. I'm going to give it one more mix and make sure. Okay, and we want to make sure that we don't need this one just like the graham cracker crackers. We want to make sure that we want to make sure we don't make the dough tough by kneading it too long. So this is good. I like this dough texture here. This one is also going to get covered and put in the refrigerator. But this one needs to probably sit a little bit longer because there's a lot less liquid in this dough. So I don't want to play with it too much because the majority of this dough is cheese and butter. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to form this into our dough ball. And if you want to do this like pie dough, you could turn this into a little disc and wrap it with saran wrap or cling film and put that in your fridge so that when we go to roll it out later, it's already ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and, well, I was gonna go ahead and put this in here, put this in my refrigerator, but my refrigerator probably doesn't have room for that. So I probably will go ahead and put this in some clean film. And I'm just going to wrap this up. And that way we will be able to use this again for our last cracker recipe. Okay, and you can see this is nice and soft dough. So we're gonna put our cheese cracker dough in the refrigerator for about an hour. Alexa, set a timer for one hour. Second timer, one hour, starting now. Do you want to name this timer? Cheese crackers. Okay, I'll call it a cheese crackers timer. One hour, starting now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse the bowl out here and I'll go ahead and rinse out, rinse off the paddle so that we can be back for our last cracker recipe. Okay, so for our butter crackers, we're going to be using soft white wheat. You could use spelt or einkorn or something like that, but we don't really wanna use hard white wheat because that will probably make our crackers be a little bit tough so we're gonna use soft white wheat. I'm gonna mill about 240 grams of this, and then I'll show you how we get onto the butter crackers. I'm literally five grams short. Let me go refill my soft white wheat real quick. Okay, now that we got these refilled, I can get those last few grams. <laughs> All right. Okay, and here is our fresh milled soft white wheat. To this, I'm going to add a teaspoon of baking powder, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and for the baking powder, you wanna make sure that you are checking your baking powder. Leavening agents do go bad, baking powder and baking soda. So you wanna make sure when you're making these crackers, it's our only rising agent to give us a tender, but yet crispy cracker. So you wanna make sure that you're using fresh baking powder. And I, I like to use the aluminum free kind. It's kinda of hard to find. I can put a link below to that as well. And I'm just going to mix these dry ingredients until they're incorporated here, just real quickly with my fork. And I'm gonna set this to the side here. And this is the only cracker recipe we're making today that calls for cold butter. So I'm just going to give my mixer a little help here by cubing this up and not just throwing an entire half a cup of butter that's cold <laughs> in here. Okay. 
So this is reminiscent of pie dough, I guess, but we're not making pie dough today. I do have a recipe for a nice pie dough, especially for pumpkin pie since fall is coming up. And that's on my blog as well. I'm gonna put that whole half a cup of butter, one stick into there. And you could make this in the food processor, I suppose. I don't have one of those. Maybe that's something I may invest in in the future. But to this, we're gonna add that flour mixture. And I'm going to just lightly start mixing this in together. And I'm just using the same spatula that we've been using. Just cleaned it off in between. <laughs> Come on, butter. Just make sure we scrape the sides. And it's going to look very dry and crumbly at this point in time. Okay, so you can see we've got the butter mixed in with the flour and it's all crumbly, so that's what we want. And to this, we're gonna add about two thirds cup of milk. I'm gonna put the one in and I'm gonna hold on the second so I can see the texture of my dough. So let's mix in the first one. And I'm going to drizzle this in as this works, kind of like we did the cheese crackers. Okay, I may not use all of it on this one. Let me give this a little mix and make sure it's got all of my dry flour in here. Because as you guys know, fresh milk flour does take a little bit longer to absorb liquids. Okay. I think I'm gonna hold off on the rest of this. It's just a very small amount, maybe only a teaspoon or two left. And I'm gonna add my honey. Okay, and we're going to do about a tablespoon of honey if you like it a little bit sweeter, of course you could add more. If you don't want it as sweet, you could add less. <laughs> I think we need a little bit of sweetener here just to balance out the flavors. Let's mix that in. Again, like you know, we scrape the sides, make sure everything is incorporated. And this may even be a bit wet. I'll have to get my hands in there here in a little bit to see what I'm working with. Okay, so with the textures of the other doughs, I'm noticing that this one is definitely a wetter dough. I think I'm gonna go ahead and mill just a little bit more soft white wheat and put it in here. And then that way I can add in the rest of the milk. In the printable recipe, I will make sure to put the adjusted amount of flour. That way you have the correct one and you don't have to fiddle around with it. But you may need more or less of the milk, more or less of the flour. Just keep an eye on the texture of your dough. This one's just looking a little bit wet. As you can see, I grab it and it sticks to my hands. So I'm just wanting it to be just a little bit drier than that. So let me go ahead and mill a little bit more and then we'll put that in here. Okay, so I milled about 60 more grams, which is about a half a cup of flour. I'm gonna put half of that in here and see where that takes us. Cause I'd like to be able to get the rest of the milk in there. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the milk in, which then may allow me to put the rest of this in. So let's see. Now 
Now I'm wa not wanting to develop gluten here, obviously, just like the rest of the crackers. We don't want a tough cracker. We want a tender cracker. The good thing is, is soft white wheat does not develop gluten like our hard wheats. And so we don't have to worry about that too much like we would if we were using all purpose flour at this point. Let's go ahead and put the rest of this in. Because I think it can handle it. Okay, that's looking more promising. Okay, see how that's forming more of that ball texture rather than just splattering all over the place like it was prior. Let's see if we can get that to form a ball. Get my hands in there. I get a better idea of the texture of the dough if I can actually get my hands in and touch it. So. Okay. I'm liking that. It may be a hair on the sticky side, but it's not sticking to my hands like it was previously. So this is a more uh, tender, soft dough than the other two. So we're going to form this in a ball and cover this one up and let this one sit in the fridge. Okay, so this one's getting covered. It's gonna sit in the fridge for an hour and we had made great timing because the graham cracker dough is ready to roll out. So that's why I thought it might be a good idea to go ahead and make the dough for each one and that way we can start rolling them out as the other ones are sitting. So we'll head to the table over there and start rolling these out and baking them. That way we can check on our crackers. Okay, so now our graham cracker dough has rested and is ready. I went ahead and milled just a little bit more of soft white wheat so I can use that to dust my baking mat here. And we want to roll these out pretty thin, about an eighth of an inch or so. So this rolling pin has these little rubber gauges on the side here. They come and they come right off and they come on and they have many different sizes, but I have found these to be so helpful <laughs> when trying to roll out crackers or anything that requires a certain thickness. Okay, let me get my pastry cutter too, in case I need that. Okay, so I think this is probably going to be easier to work with about half of the dough at a time. So maybe we will go ahead and just cut the dough in half. Put this back. Leave it covered. So I have my baking sheet and I have that lined with parchment paper and I'm just going to make sure that my dough ball here is nice and cohesive. I want to make sure I put a good amount of flour on my work surface here on the bottom. I'm going to press that out and just sprinkle a little bit of the flour on the top and every once in a while we just want to make sure that we're not having anything stick Do the same thing here I'm just going to start rolling out the only hard part with this roller is if you're trying to use too big Alexa timer off that's our cheese crackers. <laughs> if you're trying to use too big of a piece of dough, you won't be able to roll it in multiple directions. So 
So that's why I decided to cut the dough in half. And I'm glad I did. Anytime it starts to grab or stick, go ahead and just put some more flour on the top. Okay, so that feels perfectly level across. So I'm going to use my pastry cutter to cut out my graham cracker squares. You can get creative here. You can do cutouts. If you want shapes, you can do your squares, your rectangles, whatever kind you want to do. But I'm just going to use my pastry cutter and just make straight edges for me. because I'm going to end up having to re-roll this out anyways, but it just makes it a little bit easier. I don't mind a little bit of raw edges or rough edges. Like that. These are super helpful to have because they get right under the dough, especially with this mat. It just glides perfectly over the top. All right, I'm just going to... Then we just have to decide what size we want. Just gonna sort of divide this little section into thirds. And I'm just gonna make squares. That one didn't turn out very good. I'm just gonna re-roll that one. And it's gonna go on my lined baking sheet. Try, whoops, to get a third row here on these. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in the oven, 350 for 20 minutes and grab another baking sheet. Oh wait, let me poke our little iconic holes. Okay, so to poke the holes, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just use a little toothpick. I'm going to just roll that end into a little bit of this flour here. And I think I'm just gonna go pull, pull, pull. I'm going to do that with each one. These may bake up obviously not flat. If you had a normal 9 by 13 pan, you would probably be using that one. <laughs> but I have a tiny little oven that I don't ha I'm not able to get a full 9 by 13 without the lip that I found anyway. But I'm perfectly fine with this. I'm just gonna set that there for the next round and these are gonna go in the oven. Okay, so Matt is going to try using our pasta maker to see if we can get the kind of crackers that we want to the thinness and see if that is more efficient to, than this method. If so, it's kind of like something new. 
I'm putting a little bit extra flour in there because I know that our pasta sheeter is going to require a drier dough. I'm not sure if this will work. It may completely clog the machine all up, but have a go at it. I'm going to clean this off and if we need more flour. So at the beginning when Matt tried to use the pasta sheeter, we didn't think it was going to work because the dough just kept breaking apart. But he found as he worked the dough a little bit more and added the right amount of flour to it, it worked through the sheeter surprisingly well. I was a little skeptical at first when we were trying this because I really thought that it either wouldn't work or it would get all jammed in the machine and gum it all up or we would end up with super tough crackers. So I guess you'll see the results here in a little bit after we bake them so we can taste test each one to see if there's any difference. As you can see, Matt has much better of that finishing touch than I do. <laughs> I'm more of the baker as far as flavor and technique goes, but he's definitely more of the finish, make it pretty. <laughs> uh, I guess that's a good thing in our marriage that we balance each other out, that we both have different skills, but yet we like to work together <laughs> so that we can get these things done and make them look great at the same time. I think he did a really nice job on these and I was excited to try the other flavors. So I this tray. Okay, the first batch is out of the oven, so we're going to go ahead and start on the next batch. Nice and crispy. Okay, so using the pasta maker for the graham crackers was a success. However, there was a slight difference in the texture. So the graham crackers that I rolled out are slightly thicker and a little bit more tender. And the graham crackers that we used the pasta maker on are a little bit thinner. So it really is all in your opinion on how you like your graham crackers. So we're going to attempt to do the same thing with the cheese crackers. Okay, now we're going to start the cheese crackers. And the cheese crackers are gonna bake in the oven at 375 Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. So now on to these cheese crackers. As you see at the very beginning, they started to fall apart, but he said that was because the dough was super cold. When he warmed it up in his hands, he was able to get it to go through the sheeter without adding any additional flour. So the fact that he didn't have to add any additional flour, I think improved the texture of this cracker. And <laughs> honestly, when some of these were done, I probably wouldn't have been able to tell that this wasn't an actual name brand Cheez-It on some of these. <laughs> they did bake a little bit unevenly, so some got darker than others. And that was all I guess a preference of taste as well. We have some in our family that prefer that extra toasty Cheez-It flavor and then others that preferred it to not be. So that ended up working out for our family really well. We just used a chopstick to put the little hole in the middle. It's probably not required, but it makes it look more authentic. But you can see this baking mat was super helpful for this. He was able to cut them all in those one inch strips so we could get little one inch one by one squares and it just worked out so perfectly and I think they turned out so cute. And to these I'm going to add just the lightest little sprinkling of salt And then they're gonna bake for 375 for about 15 minutes, but watch them close because they can burn quick. And here he is with round two. And with these crackers, we actually played around quite a bit. We found out that the thinner we rolled them, the better. He was pretty much challenging himself at this point. He got it all the way down like thinner than pasta. <laughs> He had it probably 16th of an inch thin, but when we baked them, of course they baked for a little bit less time, but they were so crispy and perfect. So if you can make them that thin, I suggest at least trying it because all of them have just a little bit of a different flavor depending on how thick it is. But I do know that we have tried this recipe in the past and not rolled them thin enough. And that was a big mistake because they kind of are soft and mushy and they don't taste quite the same. So you definitely want to make sure that they're at least one eighth of an inch thick 
all the way around or thinner. And I am editing this video the next day and these cheese crackers are more than half gone already. <laughs> Guys, if you have a pasta maker or a pasta sheeter, I recommend using it because it was a total game changer for us for rolling these out perfectly. If you don't have one, a rolling pin will still work just fine, but these got them all perfectly thin and crisp. I'm mon munching on them right now. <laughs> I'm so glad that Matt was willing to do that for us. Okay, round one of the cheese crackers is done. It smells so cheesy in here. All right, on to the last one, our butter crackers. The cheese crackers work so well with the pasta maker, we're gonna give it a shot on the last ones for the butter crackers and see how it goes. These are gonna bake in the oven for 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes or so. All right, and we figured why not try it with these butter crackers. I really didn't think that these were going to work because this dough was the softest of them all, but he was able to use this dough even without extra flour as well. So I wonder if once he got the hang of it, he would have been able to do the graham crackers also without additional flour because if that was the case, they would be amazing. But I think the next time we plan on making crackers, we're definitely going to give it a shot with this pasta maker. It saved so much time and it made the results all uniform so everything was the same thickness. And these are basically more like a club cracker. These butter crackers definitely took longer than the 10 minutes. I would say closer to 13 to even up to 15 minutes. You don't want to burn them, but we did have a few that we only baked at like the 10 to 12 minutes that are still slightly soft. So those will be great and using for breadcrumbs or dipping into soup, but probably not to eat by themselves. But the ones that baked all the way through are delicious. Okay, and to the butter crackers, we're going to melt a little bit of butter and brush this butter on the crackers and then sprinkle those with some salt as soon as they come out of the oven. Okay, so now these are done. I'm just going to brush these with some melted butter and then we'll dust with some salt. And I definitely recommend putting a nice coating of butter and salt on these crackers. Originally, the first batch, we only baked for about 10 minutes and we realized that wasn't quite enough. So we went ahead and baked these for a little bit longer, like 12 to 13 minutes. I'm much happier with the results. You can see they've started to brown on the edges a little bit. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, and I'm just gonna give these a sprinkling of some salt. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today as we made all three of these crackers, small, medium, large. We have the cheese crackers, nice and crispy and cheesy. The butter crackers are nice and buttery and crispy. And the graham crackers are amazing. So I hope you enjoyed all three of these recipes. I, again, I'll post a link to the recipes in the description box below for all three of these. Don't forget to check out my blog at grainsandsmallplaces.net where you can find all of these recipes and a whole bunch more, all dedicated to fresh milled flour. So thank you for stopping by Grains and Small Places. Goodbye. You can see that you're out of butter. It's because we just poured the whole thing in the oven. Yeah. That may have happened. That was cheesy. You see what I did? <laughs>